A small note, in this video we will talk about the very first theory of MedPad, which was released almost a year ago, since this video is a translation of my one year old video. Good Ewan. So hello everyone, I am Slade, and a year ago MedPad, who is perhaps the main FNAF theorist and to whom many listen, began releasing a series of theories about FNAF security breach, and with his statement spread a lot of hype on Twitter, because his theory turned out to be very controversial. And today I will tell you why you should not believe it. And before the video starts, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel and click the bell to not miss my videos. Well, if you have done this, we are moving on to the video. Let's go. Well, this fear of Madpad begins with the fact that he is confused by the random appearance and the lack of revelation about Gregory. Allegedly, the game begins with the fact that Gregory is inside Freddy, and on his count it turns out that he is not at the visitor database at the Pizza Plex. And in a bad ending, when escaping from this very Pizza Plex, he turns out to be homeless. And also, Gregory calls his name with a second thought. I... I'm... Gregory. It's all strange, we don't know who Gregory is and the game doesn't reveal it to us, and this does not give Matt any peace. So do you know what he does in this case? He literally compares the appearance of Gregory and the victim of Bite of 83, and reveals that they are absolutely similar, therefore Gregory is nothing but a crying child, and that's where Madpad's nonsense begins. The person who lead the theories at the beginning of NAV draws a conclusion about the personality of the character not from any actions of the character, game events, messages or something else. He just takes two characters and says that they are supposedly similar in appearance, which means they are the same character. I think you already understand that it will be a lot of fun next. So the next argument in his theory is that Freddy says I feel you are broken. Just as Plushbear said in FNAF 4. Allegedly, by this reference, we had to understand connection of Gregory with the bite victim. The scene itself is strange because it seems to me to be nothing more than a coincidence, because not such a catchy phrase to draw such large scale conclusions from it. Well, then follows a great argument which I still can understand. He takes the phrase of Chica where she says that she wants to take Gregory to his parents, and when Madpad himself said that there was just previously record phrase for the security protocol, he immediately says that Chica wants to lead him to Willem, who is under the pizza plex as we know. And then I want to ask. Why the hell is she attacking us instead and taking us to Vanessa? And why are such strange conclusions just based on the usual word parents? Where is there any logic in this theory at all? Well, then my favorite part begins. He remembers that the crying child, damn it, was the bite victim, and apparently after it he moved into Golden Freddy. So why the hell is he still alive in his opinion? And Matt had a brilliant answer. Gregory is a robot, a rebuilt version of the crying child. Yes, you heard right. He seriously thinks Gregory is a robot. He proceeds from the fact that such a twist has already occurred in the trilogy of books with Charlie. Well, he also leads to some fast birth rides, where children sometimes change bodies with robots or were replaced with a certain body from Pink Fast Go. Although, I didn't really understand what the Fast Go was about. And honestly, I don't understand what it was said at all. Does he really think that since it was in the books, then this concept needs to be shoved everywhere and close all plot holes with it? It absolutely doesn't make any sense. But let's listen to his arguments on this score. As the first one, he cites the fact that at the sight of Vanny, a very strange thing starts happening with the screen. Allegedly, this is due to the fact that instead of eyes, we have cameras, and at the sight of Vanny, it begins to lag. Quite a controversial argument, but this is probably the only thing I can agree with here. This is a really strange thing that I can't explain in any way except by game design. But this effect really raises questions. He further said that when Roxy's eyes are in the end of Freddy, he begins to see us differently, supposedly noticing that we are a robot. You look different to me. However, Freddy himself does not say anything about this, does not ask any questions related to our essence, so the statement is very strange. And the next and very strange argument is that, wow, but Gregory can be in the charge with Freddy. This is an absolutely meaningless argument because we are inside Freddy, in a compartment isolated from virus, and I don't understand what's wrong with it at all. And you know, that's basically where his arguments end. So to the questions who made Gregory bot, why someone needed, he decided not to answer, and we didn't receive any explanations. But if this theory could still make at least some sense, despite the fact that I strongly advise you not to believe it, but it's at least based on some weak but facts, then the following theory will shock you. Remember how we get to the pizza place at the end of the game. So Freddy tells us that he knows this place and has been here before. I know what this is. I have been here before. And Matt tells that Michael Afton also was in the pizzeria before. He was a security guard here and burned down at the workplace. And in one of the endings, Freddy burns down a pizza plex. Just Michael Afton burns down a pizzeria in FNAF 3. And also, Madpad brings Michael's secret room here, in which there is a message allegedly hitting at his fate and allegedly writing by him. 
And at this moment he makes a conclusion from which my forehead just cracks from my own face palms. Michael Afton has moved into Glamrock Freddy. If the past fury again made at least a little sense, then this is refuted only by the ending of NAF 6, where Michael Afton bursts the hell out and his soul is freed. Why the hell should he move into Glamrock Freddy, which was created a few years after the fire of NAF 6 and accordingly Michael's death? It never worked like that and if Michael had possessed Freddy, then Freddy had to be at least next to Michael, or Michael had to be killed by Freddy. I don't know how else to explain it, but even so it would hardly work. Because let's look at the blueprints of NAF 6, and we will understand that the remnant, for those who don't know, is remains of human emotions in the FNAF universe, which has healing and love giving properties and it's for what Afton killed for, because he wanted to be immortal. So this very remnant disappears forever at high temperatures, as it's written here. And it was Henry Emily who scolded everyone in Epicuria, creating that very same temperature when he started the fire. So all the souls were supposed to disappear to find peace after that, but then you probably ask, how is William Afton still alive after two fires? And here everything is simple. For the first time, as the cutscene from the sister location showed, he apparently got out of the attraction during the fire. And after the second fire, he was held between life and death by a vengeful spirit, creating a personal hell for him in the form of an ultimate custom knight. But the spirit could not keep it to the end, and William was freed. Thus, the souls of Charlie, Elizabeth, Henry and Michael had to fly to heaven, and they should not be remembered at all anymore. But they should not have moved somewhere else in any way, and even more so in something that was created a few years after their death. This has absolutely no sense, and I hope everything is clear to you now. Also, speaking about being in the pizza place, we can debunk Lamarck Michael by what Freddy says I have been here before. She brought me here. So he was brought here by a certain she, which he tells Gagari about. And I think it's clear to everyone here that it's most likely Venia. Meanwhile, Michael was brought to the pizza place by a job announcement and a desire to sort out the things that his family had done. So the Glenark Michael is very easily broken and refuted by past games, and there is no reason to believe it. Well, this nonsense ends with the fact that because of the phrase My friends are here, they are so angry, confused. My thing that the souls of these bullies, that is Michael's friends, are in the pizza plex. And where should they be if not in the same blob? A cluster of a bunch of virus and virus animatronics. Of course, it's so logical and meaningful, isn't it, Matt? Considering that these bullies had absolutely no connection to the whole story and there is no evidence other than Freddy's force to this, this is an absolute disregard for the logical chain in theory. And it's just some kind of empty throwing facts into the air, which just amazes me, I don't understand what happened to Matt, really. Another option where Michael's friends are was that they were placed in a gang of Glamrocks, and that's why Gregory allegedly treats them so cruelly, as if he was taking revenge on them. But again, the appearance of the bullies has absolutely no sense, and also Gregory got not there in the Glamrocks at all. But for me, this is basically not the main thing. The main thing is that it would fail complete the arc of the crying child and his brother. Supposedly the brother would like to redeem himself and protect the crying child for this. And that's why in the introductory cutscene, Glamrock Freddy begins to lag. He allegedly notices Gregory in the crowd, who is supposedly his brother, and his system crashes. But again, all of this just collapses about the facts I just prior to you with. Glamrock Freddy can possibly be Michael, that's 100% for sure as well as the probability that the crying child is Gregory, who is a robot, is extremely small. Matt overdid with such a simple story of this game and stuffed the next return of all the Aftons into, in fact, a game no longer related to them. This is strange to me and ignoring the facts and explanations in the video fascinates me extremely. This is no longer the Matt we knew. This is already some kind of Matt pet who has gone crazy. There's really nothing else to say, I, I can't explain it. Matt Pat. And how good is that this video ends, and I don't need to explain any... Wait... What? Yes, he really thinks that Vanessa is also a robot, that contains Elizabeth's soul, because of the same color of her eyes, and because of... ice cream in her hand? Seriously? Fortunately, he left this nonsense for another video, and I don't need to disassemble and explain anything yet. But I assure you, this is some kind of madness, and people are not alarmed about it for nothing. But Madpet, you know, doesn't seem to care about criticism at all, and for some reason he also posted this disgrace in his Twitter, where again a lot of people in the comments laugh at him. Because this is really some kind of nonsense served under a beautiful rapper, and I hope you understand this. And that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, you learned something new for yourself and understood what is wrong with this theorist. 
In the next video we will talk about his second theory about Venny. And believe me, it will be no less interesting there. And in order to thank me somehow for this video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to this channel and click the bell to not miss my videos. So, slate for the few. Thank you all for your watching and see you soon.